Out to you. Now, don't, don't cave. I, you give me something strong. There. Yeah, I don't want you falling over from me. Now, back to me. See, you're falling into me? Yes. Now, when I let this fall, I have even a better downward. Now, feel what happens when I stretch my spine up over you. I didn't bend the knees to do that, but I stretched and I came over the top with my spine. That was me like when, when you said you were going through your spine. But even though I didn't physically change, I became lighter. <laughs> Yes. 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 <laughs> so I'm not actually moving this, I'm rotating around it. Mm -hmm. But if I want you to float, I'll bring my heart in, which changes my spine angle this way. So I'll come in underneath you. That makes you light. Yes. Then when I come in over the top of you, I'll crush you down. And that there is no push there. So hunker down more. Okay? So I want to make you light. I connect here to your center. Then I'll come in underneath here. <coughs> now I want to come over the top. And you notice when he fell, there's no push. So I didn't, I didn't fall over. <coughs> yeah. Up and down. So later on when you can do this, this unique you. I didn't crank your wrist. Once I connect here, it's not here. That's what everybody does. They want to crank the hell out of the wrist. This is here. That's what I want. Because there's guys, some of these big boys, you can't crank their wrists. They say no. But you can bring your energy over and disturb their structure. Nice. So make sure you're not getting that back to you by collapsing. Because if they're any good, the moment you collapse, they took it. Okay? So you come out to me, I'm already inside you. It might look like I'm collapsing because I'm flexing. But you see I was hitting you on this. Okay? There is no point at which you contract. Period. Okay? However, your extension can flex. So here's a way to do that. Remember unbendable arm, you put the hand on the shoulder and then they push down on your elbows. And you, you, know, you say, oh yeah, you can't bend my arm. Actually, that's not the cool thing. Just keep an even pressure there. What's a cool thing is that I can let this extension flex and then unflex. Okay? Try it. Because if you let this flex by collapsing, once you've collapsed, you can't get back out. I can't go back out now. But if I never collapsed, if I just let this extension flex, I can go back out. And he'll move with it. Try that, because I want you to feel it. If you can't do this, you probably can't actually receive properly. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, that's happening just so I can move the arm. But you see how this is all flexing? This is flexible. If I collapse it to get away from this power, I can't get back. I can't get back out. Okay? So that, when you see me flexing, when he grabs here, you might even see it looks like my hands are collapsing. No, the flow was always out. I'm just letting it flex. I want to make sure everybody understands that because a lot of people are collapsing. It's actually not hard. You just have to have it explained. Yeah. I mean, you could take somebody off the street and give me 15 minutes, I could teach them to do it. it so I know that a lot of people, if he's really coming into my center like that, wow, what do I do with that? Well, you know, I might choose to absorb it by flexing. But that doesn't mean I'm losing the out. Okay? I just want to make sure that when you saw that, it's not what a lot of you guys are doing. A lot of you guys are collapsing. And once you collapse, you'll never get the extension back. Okay? So that flexible extension, once again, you have to be able to do that. Now, let's actually do this. Grab two hands on one. Marotatory. Okay? So out to him. Now, the back to me is a little different. Uh, yes, some of it can be the sliding the shoulder blades together still. 
This shoulder blade thing is interesting because it's a mechanical thing. Ushiro Sensei talks about it's how you bring the, the power that they're putting into you and bring it into your spine, your vertical axis. But what it also does is when you slide your shoulder blades together, it opens your chest up. What's this? This is the heart chakra. You know, if you know about chakras. Who doesn't know about chakras? Okay. These are those energy centers they talk about in Indian yoga. Almost all your Asian systems, acupuncture, they all have these. Okay. Start at your tailbone, work all the way up. Okay. So this is the heart chakra. It's a big energy center here. O sensei said that Aikido practice was about opening up your heart chakra. So that functions on a lot of levels. I mean, this thing we're doing here is mechanical. How do I take the power he's putting into me and bring it to my spine? But you're also learning to meet incoming power expansively, not contraction. And that has implications beyond technique. This stuff exists in English. This, isn't, this is cross-cultural. Okay? It's not an Asian thing. What do we call somebody who is really generous and friendly and, and not fearful? Open-hearted? Big-hearted. Big -hearted. Guys got lots of heart. We have tons of these expressions in English. And they have almost exact equivalents in Japanese and Chinese and Sanskrit. Okay? So this heart chakra thing is something that Man is known about for thousands of years, and even stupid Westerners who get really carried away with all of their analytical science, we haven't completely lost our understanding of this particular issue. Okay? You know, this whole big hearted, open hearted, open up your heart to people. We, we know what that means. So, that, you know, if you want to talk about why O Sensei had all these ideas about the spiritual side of Aikido, there's people who talk about this stuff all the time. They can't tell you how that relates to technique. For O Sensei, there wasn't any separation. These ideas came from his understanding of what's going on in his body. And in Asian culture, if you go back to like the earliest, earliest Indian spiritual books, they're called the Upanishads. Okay? So the Upanishads probably older than anything else over in Asia. And one of the fundamental ideas in there is what's in here is out there. And that goes through all of Asian culture. So your body is a microcosm for the universe. Okay? So when O Sensei is practicing all this stuff and learning how to balance the forces in here, for him, when you do that, you are taking your body and making it a reflection of the same balance of forces that exist in the universe. You are connecting to that larger energy just by doing this. Okay? So I don't want to get carried away with that, but I wanted you to see that this stuff, it's not about mechanics. It's certainly not about fighting. I mean, the idea that O-Sensei created Aikido to be another form of fighting is something that only silly British cab drivers online believe. He knows who I'm talking about. Okay. It's, anyway. No, it's, it's, it's silly. There were already plenty of fighting styles. O Sensei had been in combat. He already knew how to fight. Okay. And then he creates Aikido. It was clearly for something more than that. And yet, what happens later is that the, the, the spiritual ideas that he were, was expressing, these philosophical and spiritual ideas caught on, but people couldn't express it in their technique. And then you had other people who couldn't, you know, just didn't, weren't that interested in that side of things. And they started their own styles of Aikido where it's all about technique. And, you know, they didn't want to know about this stuff. Okay, but I was trained by Satome Sensei, and Satome Sensei, for him, it's not separate. Okay? And this is a spiritual practice, and it's a valid martial art. And if you understand a concept, you know, in terms of the philosophy or spiritual or energetic, you should be able to show it in your body. There, should, there shouldn't be a separation here. Does that make sense? Okay, so. Okay. 
when I bring my spine there, I open up. Okay. Now here's another little trick. This is a technical trick. Don't close off the space between your body and your upper arm. Okay, the internal power guys say, pretend there's an egg there or a golf ball. Now watch what happens to me when I open that. See? I have them. I'm inside now. This fires a whole bunch. I, I'm not, I don't even know enough anatomy to tell you what this fires, but when you open that up in there and make that space, it fires a whole bunch of connective tissue stuff that makes your body have a whole bunch more structure. Okay? In this case also, since my elbow goes out when it happens, that enters inside him. See him tilt? So if I let the hands gently fall to me and the elbow goes out to him, I can come over the top now. And all I need to do is rotate to tip him. Okay? So out to him, back to me, open up, turn, drop. Okay? Now, if you have luck with that, then I want, to, want you to be able to do it on both sides. Okay? So this is only slightly trickier. And there, what it means is I've been having out to him. Well, but I got another out to him. So kind of have to start thinking in terms of 360 now. How do you do that? Open up your chest. Feel it? So right now they've got me. Ooh, ooh. I'm on the outside of their power. Okay? Which is why I'm not having any luck struggling here. You ever watch Ron Dory when three people grab the guy and then he just sits there and struggles and they wrestle him to the ground? Okay? Because he doesn't have any idea what he's doing. What you need to do when they grab you, put your mind behind them, and open up. Now I have both of them. Now the elbow fire. Boop. And now the knees bend. Okay? Do you see when I actually, what happened to both of them when I just made my mind bigger? Instead of thinking about this, which is where everybody perceives the problem being here. This isn't the problem. They're the problem. The whole thing. And so if I actually say, well, you know, I don't even feel like I have a problem. I'm going to open up and get behind both of them. Who has who now? You feel when I expanded? They went from having me, and then I just got bigger, and then I had them. And yeah, I did, I did open up the elbow, and relax into my space, opened up that heart chakra. But when this was expanding, I also just got big and put my mind behind both of them. Try it. Did anybody not have any luck with that? See, it's pretty cool, because it's like, this is the stuff the eighth dons do, but you, you can do it, you just need a certain amount of instruction. It's not, none of this Ike stuff is difficult to actually do it. You need good instruction, but, you know, so far I think everybody that I'm look, I'm watching, everybody's doing it. Okay? What is difficult to do is do it under pressure with somebody who's really trying to hurt you. And, you know, that obviously you have to work up to because it requires, there's a couple things that are going on here. One of which is that you absolutely have to accept the energy of the attack. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're afraid of it. Okay? Because you, if you watch out, I'm reaching out and greeting it and then I'm actually allowing it to be here. A little earlier we did a little uh, Iremi practice talking about how, how Irimi works. And we're doing it off of strikes. The instant in which I say, yes, I'm here, that strike's coming, and I go, yeah, I'm here. That was the instant I accepted the energy of the strike. If I'm already trying to evade, the guy's tracking me. I have to actually, for a split second, really be where he could hit me. And it's the same thing when somebody grabs you, <coughs> you have to say, ah, okay, yeah, you get that. You get the grab. And then I'm going to take that energy into my structure, mess your structure up. But I have to accept it. If you're afraid of it, you're either going to be trying to beat it. See, I mean, I got away from it, but nothing happened to him that was productive. 
or you try and reject it, which means you're getting stiff, okay? or you try and get away from it by collapsing. All these things are, are just symptoms of not really accepting the energy of the attack. But see, if I'm really here and he wants to come, he gets to have that. He just doesn't necessarily get to have it the way he envisioned it. I can change the relationship on it. I don't want him not to have it. This, if he gets it, then I've got something I can do. Right now, all I can do is go. But, wow, he gives me this gift. He gave me access. So, in a sense, that's much more um, comprehensible. Computers and security. What is the only way to be absolutely sure that no one can hack your computer? Don't plug into the net. If you don't connect to the net, they can't hack your computer. Okay? Even the NSA hasn't figured out how to put a drone over your house and access your computer yet. Give them time. You know, they'd love to. Pull everything off your hard drive from two miles up. I'm sure they're working on it, but they haven't figured it out yet, to my knowledge. If they have, they're not saying. So, on our stuff, when an attacker puts his attention on you and develops that mental connection, he has opened his system up for hacking. Okay? Now that is what's happening before we touch. That's a little more, you know, once again, that's another couple steps up on the pay grade. But when he gives me this connection, he has allowed me to hack his system. Why is this even working? Okay? Because I'm not trying to fight him here. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, sure, you can have that. And then what, what happens is some of these things, your balance is breaking, you're going in your brain, why the hell am I holding on? I should be able to just let go of this. But the, the thing is what's happening, your brain is fundamentally a receptive organ. It wants to receive information. That's what the brain does, okay? It receives tons and tons and tons of information and it processes it. Then it makes decisions about what to do with it. So if this guy's attacking me and he comes in, the moment he touches me, okay, not only is he putting some stuff out to me, but he's analyzing the result. Like, did I take that hip back? See, he just made another adjustment because... When he started to get this, I made an adjustment with my hip. So he's starting to make an adjustment. He's feeling all this stuff. There's this big process going on, the conversation. Even in a fight, it's still a conversation. Because if the guy's any good at all, he's got to be feeling what I'm doing in response to what he's doing. So if I don't reject that, he gave me everything I need to move him. And he doesn't let go, and he doesn't break connection because actually, as he goes down, he's still getting information. This is another interesting thing. When his balance breaks, okay, stand on one foot. Yeah. You see? The mat is a little spongy, so it's actually kind of difficult to stand on one foot because there's you have to make a... See all the little... See his hakama jiggling? He's making a whole bunch of micro-adjustments here to keep his balance. Now, just take that finger and touch my hand. Do you see him stabilize? Okay, this is how your brain maps its space. That's called proprioception. You know exactly where in space your limbs are. That's why you can do this and not have to look at it. Okay, why I can take a bokeh and go and touch his hair and not clock him. Your brain naturally maps its space. It's really kind of an amazing thing. This is one of the more amazing things. So when he's sitting there doing balancing on one foot, when he gets a stable reference point, he gets much more stable. So what's interesting about that is once I get here, he starts to become dependent on it. And if I move me, he starts to go with it. Why didn't he just take us? I didn't pull him. But his brain wanted it. 
so if you can look at your techniques that way, he's holding on to me here. As I start to disturb him and he starts to do this, I'm in fact, he's going off balance here. You saw how hard he was working to keep his balance just on his own. This is a really big deal. If I leave him to his own devices and he tilts himself, look how hard it is for him to stay up. And yet, why do you have trouble throwing people? Because you're trying to throw them. Does that make sense? The guy can barely, I mean, if he doesn't stand up straight, if, I, if he tilts and puts one foot in the air, he can barely stand up on his own. And yet, when I go to throw him, he's hard to throw. That means what happened was you became part of his support structure. Okay? When we get in here and I'm trying to do this to him and he's saying no, and we're going back and forth, why is he hard to throw? Because I'm trying to throw him. If I connect and move the connection, <laughs> and then I stop holding him up, I don't throw him. I stop holding him up because when I moved here, I set, he's now dependent on me. Now, when he reorganizes, he's not anymore. But when I had him tilted here, okay, stay right there, okay? Now, I'm moving you right there. He can't even stand up by himself in that position, and yet when I'm sitting there trying to throw him, I can't throw him. So connect and stop trying to throw him. Take away the support. You became part of the support. This is true on all your techniques. Kota guys, everybody, strong. Everybody thinks this has to do with wrist locking. And if his wrists are fragile, fine, it'll work. I don't think you can do that to him. I don't think you can do that to him. And I know you can't do that to him. Torque on his, his wrists look like my ankles. <laughs> He's a seriously large guy. And you think you're going to take this and make him fall down? Not before he ever pops you in the face. What I want to do is set up that same connection to his center and move it. Then I drop on top of it. Now, if inside that I want to torque the shit out of his wrist, okay, fine. There's not a whole lot of function to it because the wrist is not what's delivering the attack. I'd rather break his balance. And if I was going to break the arm and then finish him with a kick to the head, breaking the wrist is really one of the least important things that you could do to somebody. Okay? Years ago, Ellis Amder Sensei, when he was training in Japan, still doing Aikido, he had a friend who was a kickboxer, so he, they were swapping techniques, and he was showing him Kodagaish. The guy looked at Kodagaish and said, but that wouldn't knock me out. <laughs> that's all he cared about. You, know, you want to break the wrist, fine, but he's going to knock you out with everything that's still functional. And that always stuck with me. He told me that years ago, and I said, you know, what is important? Taking the guy's center. You can break joints and stuff like that, and there's people out there, they're just still functioning. I had a lot of students who were police students used to do defensive tactics training for the um, Seattle police and the Bellevue police and everybody. And they get these guys on math. They think you can hit them over the head with your stick. You can break joints. They just keep coming. They don't feel it. So I need to take... Why does that even work? Because I'm commu what I'm doing, this is my functional definition. Remember talking before, most people can't define Ike. This was the point. My functional definition of Ike, I'm using his sensory inputs. Vision, touch, sound, that's what a key eye is doing, okay? Okay? The intuition, that sixth sense, all of it, I'm using that to move his mind so his mind moves his body. Strong. Okay? Okay? Come up here and move him. Don't let him do it. Try and do a Kota guy, Sean. Don't let him do it. You put the energy here at the contact point, you're making him strong. What you want to do is connect and then move it. How much does that hurt your wrist? That's what I'm looking for. I should be able to do it. 
Okay? It's the same thing you're already doing. I just did it with a Kota Geist grip. Okay? So that same thing we did when he grabbed, out to him, back to me, give it direction. When you're doing technique, that's all you're doing. Touch the center. There's the out to him, back to me, give it direction. It's not different. believe me? I always tell people, I, I hope someday you train long enough to be a teacher and you can stand up here and say something and look out and see this. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen Ferris Bueller? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? <laughs> okay. It's like, the Smoot Hawley Tariff Act of 1927 did what? Anyone? Okay, anyway, so here's what I want. Stand here. I want you to come up. Try your coat of geish. I want this guy to absolutely plant you on it. And then come up and connect to the center and just move you. Same way you did when they grabbed you. Try it. <laughs> 